in lab number three, we talked about view data, view back, temp data, and session variables. Uh, but this thing temp data, you know, needs much more clarification because uh, it has two methods, you know, which are very important, and that is peak and keep. And the behavior of temp data is also very different. So in lab number three, you know, uh, I did talk about temp data, but I did not go into much details about it. So in this lab seven, let me very quickly, you know, very quickly talk about a bit of temp data. And also I'll talk about two important methods, you know, peak and keep. Because what I see is that, you know, there is a lot of confusion regarding temp data because it is much, it is, it is little bit different, you know, as compared to your normal session management, what you do, that is view data and view back and session variables. So in this lab, we'll talk about temp data, peak and keep. So in lab three, when I compared temp data with view data, view bag and session variables, I said that temp data helps to maintain data throughout a single request. But that was only the half truth. And in this lab, you know, we're going to go and elaborate that thing much more and we'll try to go in more details. Now let me go and talk the full truth here. Temp data can also preserve values for the next request depending on four conditions. Again, I'll make a full statement here. Temp data helps to maintain data for a single request for, for a, for a single request. That means, you know, when your request goes from action to action and from action to a view, temp data is maintained throughout the single request. But additionally, it can also preserve values for the next request depending on four conditions. Let us talk about those four conditions. So let us start with condition number one. Temp data value will be preserved for the next request if the temp data value is not read means what for example you can see over here i have an action called as some page and this some page action will go and invoke a view called as some page dot html a razor view okay and in this some page let me go and create a temp data here so let us go and create a temp data here let's say t1 okay so i'll just say test right i'm going to put a debug point here and uh, this temp data t1 i'm not going to go and read that temp data anywhere inside my view here okay now let us see what happens so i'm so this is condition number one temp data will preserve the value if the value is not read so it will preserve the value in the next request if the value is not read so at this moment what i'm doing i'm setting the value of temp data but i'm not reading it in the page okay so if i go and run this very quickly so there my page is running so i'm going to go and uh, invoke that some page action so you can see that i have typed here home slash some page and i'm going to go and invoke that action so you can see this action is invoked and at this moment i'm doing nothing i'm not reading it on the view so if i just go and run this nothing will happen i have an empty page which gets displayed because in some page dot chhtml, I've done nothing actually. Okay. But now let me again go and run this. So let me again go and press enter. Okay. Now, if you see here, if I go and see the value of temp data. So if I go and do a quick watch or must be, I can do a pin to a source, right? You can see the temp data value is preserved in the second request. So this is scenario number one. If the temp data value is not read, it will persist for the next request. Okay. Now let us, let us do something like this. So let us now go and read this value. So I'm going to go and read this value inside this page here. So I'm going to go and copy this control C and let me go and read this value here. So at the rate control C, right? Control V and let me go and run this. So that it is running. So when the, when the first request comes, you can see that the temp data value is null. So that is right. I'm going to go and put debug point here as well. Okay. So it goes. Then it, then the view gets invoked. So that is my view. The data is read. It is displayed on the page. Now let me go and again invoke this thing, right? Invoke the same action. Now you can see that the temp data value is null. So this is scenario number two. If you read the temp data value inside your view, 
then temp data value will not be persisted for the next request. So scenario number one, if you don't read the value, it will keep persisting for the next request, next request until the value is read. The second condition, if you read the value, the value will not be persisted for the next request. Now scenario number three, if I go and read this temp data normally, and if I go and call the keep method, so if I do something like this, if I say temp data dot keep t1, then value will be again maintained for the next request. So you can see here now I'm doing a read and then I'm calling the keep method and I'm saying that please persist the value for the next request. So now if I go and run this, so I'm going to go and run this. So let me go and invoke this action here, some page. So that it goes, it goes and it sets a value. After that in the view, we go and uh, read the value, right there it is. But once we read the value, we go and keep the value, right? We call the keep method, right? So now what happens is, now if I go and run this action again, so let me go and run this action again, and you can see that the temp data has persisted. So this is scenario number three. If you go and read the value in the view, and if you go and call the keep method, then the value will be again maintained for the next request. And the last scenario, that is scenario number four. You know, in the previous scenario, we were, we were reading the values normally. But if I go and read this value by using the peak method, right? So if I go and, so let me go and delete this. If I do something like this. So if I go and read this value, so let me say a string str is equal to, I'm going to go and read the value by using the peak method. So I'll say a temp data dot peak t1, okay? And then I'll go and display the value somewhere down below, right? So if I go and read the value by using the peak method, I need to do a dot two string, it's an object. Right. Yeah, there it is. So I'm going to go and put a debug point. So in this case also, the value will be persisted for the next request. So I'm calling this action some page. So there it goes, the value is null. In the view, I am not reading the value normally now. I am reading the value by using a peak, right? So it reads the value. You can see the value of string is test. That is right. And now if I again go and if I again come for the next request, right, you can see that he has maintained the value. So there are typically four conditions, you know, when it comes to temp data. Let me give you a visual diagram of it. So scenario number one, if you do not read it, the value will be persisted. Scenario number two, if you do a normal read, then the value will be deleted and it will not be available for the next request. Scenario number three, if you read the value normally, when I say normally means just with the at the rate. And then after that, if you call the keep method, the value will be persisted. And the last scenario, if you go and read the value by using the peak method, the value will be persisted. So these are four conditions, you know, which you need to remember when it comes to temp data. Remember, temp data internally uses session variables. You know, it is, you can think about, you know, it's a flexible way of doing session management. So it, you can use temp data, you know, saying that, okay, I want to maintain the value for five requests or 10 requests. When you look at session variables, you know, they are maintained for the complete session until the browser is open. So sometimes, you know, you'd like to use temp data to say that, okay, I want to use this value for coming 10 requests. And after that, it goes for garbage collection. So this is the beauty of MVC. You know, it has a uh, session management, you know, which you can control the way you want it. So that was a very simple demo of temp data. And the whole point of this lab was to make you aware of temp data and the different ways by which it works. So this was a very quick 10 minutes introduction uh, to temp data and its various methods that is peak and keep. Uh, because, you know, there is a lot of confusion, you know, when it comes to temp data, people don't understand uh, when it is maintaining data, when it will not maintain data and etc. So these four conditions, if you remember, you know, you will never get confused with temp data. 
Now in the next lab, uh, we'll talk about something called as data annotations, you know, which is specifically used for doing validations. So this was 10 minutes of the video. So we have almost covered more than two hours of our uh, training. And uh, let's try to complete the rest of the 14 hours and let's try to become an MVC professional. So in the next lab, we'll talk about data annotations and validations. Thank you.